I've got to make a drive wheel for my new motor. So what I've got is a roll masking tape. It just happens to be four inches in diameter, which is what I have decided that I need for my drive wheel. So I'm going to use this as a template. I've already traced it out on this piece. I'm going to take these two pieces of plywood and this piece of uh, two by, and I'm going to laminate those all together with wood glue and make myself a drive wheel. So uh, I'll go ahead and trace these out. I kind of got ahead of myself and drilled a hole through all three. So I'm going to try to keep that hole lined up in the middle and maybe I can still still use that without losing a lot of wheel when I go to center it up. But wasn't planning on making a wheel, I thought that I had something that was going to work, and it didn't, so that's okay, just part of the project. Okay, so got those all traced out, take them to the bandsaw, and cut them out, at least as close as I can. What a mess. Okay, now they're all cut out. I've got the, this is going to be my centerpiece, and I have my two smaller discs, thinner discs. Uh, they're going to be on the outside, and I've got the side that I want in sitting up so I can glue those. Um, I just picked the better side to go on the outside, not that it probably really makes any difference, but side that looked like it was least likely, least likely to crack is the side that's going out. Went and grabbed my glue from out in my handyman trailer and I had to set it in some warm water to warm it up. It was so cold I couldn't get it to come out. If you haven't used this Gorilla Wood Glue before, it is awesome. It's good stuff. I've used the uh, Gorilla Wood Glue and the Gorilla Tape, duct tape, for different projects, and uh, they both work fantastic. That's definitely far from round, but that's okay. Clamp it up and let it dry. Okay, 
Okay, I'm not going to leave it right here. I'm going to set it on a piece of newspaper, a piece of cardboard or something, because I'm going to have a lot of wood glue, obviously, that's going to make a mess. So. And actually, if I do this, they won't be sitting in it. So, there we go. All glued up. I'll clean up my mess, let that dry, and then I'll be able to get those shaped. Okay, I used a damp rag and cleaned up my mess, and it occurred to me, if I don't take that bolt out now, it's probably not going to want to come out once that glue's dry. It may be stuck in there forever and destroy my wheel trying to take it out. So um, now that I've got these all clamped up, I'm going to go ahead and knock that bolt out. That was just for alignment. If you can see that on the camera or not, but the holes are still aligned, so it's a good thing I took that out. That would have uh, that would have really aggravated me when I came back and had to pull that out after all that glue was dry, and probably tore up my wheel in the process. So, uh, and that's going to give me two and uh, well, it's a one and a half. The two by four is one and a half, and then those two pieces of plywood are just over half an inch. So it's going to give me right at two and a half inches, um, which is fine because the belt's only two inches wide anyways. And I'm going to, when I run that through the belt sander to clean it up, I'm going to crown it. So it should work out just fine. Okay. <clears throat> so my glue is mostly dry. I've got a couple Torx screws in this on both sides, and they're spaced out for balance. Uh, and then I ran a quarter inch bolt through and nutted it on this side and I've got just enough left sticking out that I can show you guys a little trick for turning a piece of wood if you don't have a lathe, which I do not. I used to have a wood lathe, but I don't anymore. Um, I also don't do enough woodworking to keep one around, so I'll show you what I, what I do with my drill press when I don't have a lathe to use. I'm going to use that threaded piece that I left on there. Make sure that that's centered up good in my chuck. Tighten it up. This is not an original idea. I've seen other guys do this on YouTube and other places. Um, so I'm not the first one to come up with this idea. It's out there. And a lot of guys that do this, they have a uh, mandrel on the other side that's just a free spinning bearing. So I don't have that either. So what I do is I run my fence up here where the head of that bolt is coming through the pilot hole. And basically all that's for is to make sure that that this doesn't slip out of the chuck and just go flying. It's just there as a guard. It's not actually functioning as anything. So, okay, so that's in there. Um, okay, looks good. It's square with the fence. For a wobbly wooden wheel, that's probably about as good as I'm going to get. Now, I'm going to take my drill press and lay it down. kind of get it wedged in here on my workbench and I'm going to lay a block right here got a big this is a full two inch or two and a half inch by four inch block and I'm going to lay that right there clamp that down to kind of hold everything in place and then I can use this as a fence with my chisel to round that wheel and I'm not I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the bearings in this little drill press. It's just a small drill press. It's not built for this. Um, it's not built to be a milling machine or a lathe. It's just a drill press. So 
Uh, gotta be careful not to try to take very much off. I'm gonna make sure my chisel's nice and sharp and just take a little bit off at a time. All I'm trying to do is get that wheel rounded off nice and then I can go ahead and drill it out for the size of the motor shaft that I have and uh, get it put on there. So all I'm doing is going to get it leveled out and crown it a little bit and then I may clean it up some on the belt. So the drive wheel is on and that was the final